Okay, this is now part two of the notes, and we're going to make a list. And all I want you to write is group one, and then the name of each one. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what they look like, and how to identify them, where you might find them. But again, all you're writing is the names. The first one is called the stonefly nymph. And what easiest to identify is the stonefly nymph has two tails, two antenna. They look kind of uh, kind of funny with it like that, but um, you can't just rely on the two tails. As you see here, here's the two tails, here's the two antenna, but there are several other organisms that might also have two tails and look very similar. What I always look for is what looks like hair between the legs, looks like hairy armpits for each leg. Those are actually gills. And this is how they get their oxygen when the water flows through those little those little hair like things. They're collecting oxygen. That's the stonefly nymph. Like I mentioned in the other part of the notes, just because it has the word fly in it, I don't get confused when you don't say wings. This is a nymph. It's a teenage version. It's the immature form of the adult. It'll grow into an adult and then it will have wings and it will fly around in the air and be a totally different organism or look like a totally different organism. Same species, though. Next one is the caddisfly larva. And the caddisfly larva, as a larva, it does have like a worm-like body, even though it has legs unlike a worm. Um, they have a very C-shaped body. I always think C is for caddisfly. And if I show you this picture, it has a here's a C-shaped body, and they have like a very fleshy abdomen with lots of little things here. I think they might be gills. And what the caddisfly does to protect itself is, it, well for one thing it has silk, like a spider. It has spinnerets and silk. And it uses its silk to capture food and make a little net. But it uses its silk to glue together sticks, rocks, twigs, anything it can find on the bottom of the stream and make itself a suit of armor. So we have here a caddisfly inside of its case. Now a lot of times we'll find the case but we won't find a caddisfly in it. If that happens we can't count it. We're only counting living organisms. We don't know if that case was empty. Uh, I mean if the caddisfly died to that day or the year before but they're still very cool to find. This one is called the Dobson fly larva, and the Dobson fly larva is one of the largest ones we'll find. They're, they can grow up to four inches long. Now if we ever found one, I would be simultaneously excited and freaked out, because in 12 years of doing this, I've never ever found a Dobson fly larva. That's because they are only found in the cleanest of clean water. They are usually found at the headwaters, the beginnings of a river or stream, and if it's even the slightest bit polluted, they can't tolerate it. The reason I'd be freaked out, though, is because they are known to have this painful bite. And you can see in this drawing that they have these like large pinchers, like an, a black ant. Um, and yeah, I've heard they're pretty vicious. So here's some fuzzy pictures I found online from Dobson fly larvas. These are a close-up of their spikes on their abdomen. These spikes are just there to help protect them from being washed downstream. They're not there to, to defend against a predator, although it might help. It might make them look like they're thorny and not, not good to eat. The guild snail is next, and guild snails are called that because they breathe with gills. And what's but easy to identify about them, well there's two types, the guild snail and then the other ones have lungs, they're called pouch snails. The guild snail, if you hold it so that the pointy end is pointing up, the opening, if it's facing on the, uh, to you and it's on the right hand side, it has gills. If the opening were on the left hand side, it would have lungs. And I always remember left starts with L and so does lung. So that's pretty interesting to me that if we f just know what op side the opening is on, we know what kind of snail a snail it is. 
We can only count it if it is alive. In other words, if you find an empty shell, we can't count it. Because unlike what you've seen in SpongeBob, snails can't live without their shell. It's part of their body. The next group one organism is the mayfly nymph. And just like the stonefly, it has multiple tails, but this one has three tails. So that's why I said with the stonefly, you can't just rely on the tails. Even because sometimes a mayfly can only have two. Or maybe it lost one tail in a fight with another mayfly. But um, what we rely on instead is gills. As I told you with the stonefly, gills are between the legs. Mayfly gills are right here on the abdomen. These little things here that look kind of like little uh, legs or something. Here's another close-up, and you can see the gills right here. No hair between the legs, three tails. That's a mayfly nymph. The riffle beetle is a tiny little beetle. What's great about them is that they're adults. They've lived their whole life in the water. So not only is it currently clean, but it's been clean for a long time, since they were a larva. And they uh, look just like a typical beetle body. They have like a kind of like this hard shell on the top, six legs, oval-shaped body. But they're much smaller than you think. Look how small this guy is. This is a person's finger here, and that's their dirty fingernail. And so this is a riffle beetle, close up of a riffle beetle. This one is called the water penny. Water penny is called that because it does look like a penny. And they're very round, they've got a very flat body. They will be stuck to the surface of a rock or a log. And at first, you might not them, but if you look carefully, this thing that looks just like maybe a bump on the log is actually a water penny. And the back, it looks like this penny copper color. But this is the underbelly where they have their legs. And they hold on to the, the log or the rock to keep from being washed away. Group 2, is this is the first one in group 2, starts with the alderfly larva. The alderfly larva looks very similar to the Dobson fly larva, but it's smaller. It's only one inch long. They also have these long spiky things on the uh, abdomen. They do have biting pinchers, but they're not as big, so they won't be uh, giving you a painful bite. What I always notice, though, is the, the pointy feathery tail. And here's a picture. It's not a great picture, but um, you can see that it has this pointy tail, not as big as the Dobson fly larva in real life. The clams are in group two, and the most common type of clam we'll find is the fingernail clam. Actually, might, it's harder to find, but they're very common, because most of the time when we see them, they look just like a rock. The fingernail clam is, you guessed it, as big as your fingernail. Um, we can only count it if the clam is intact, living. Both halves of the shell are closed, because otherwise, they're dead. They've got a strong muscle that holds the clam shell shut. There's, this is a fingernail clam. This is how they move about. They, they have this little foot that comes out and pushes along. Um, we also find river clams. I don't have a picture of a good river, a river clam, but they're very, very big. They're about as big as your hand, and they're, they're usually dark color, like black. But this is another fingernail clam. The crane fly larva is, in my opinion, the grossest one because it looks like kind of like a big, fat, juicy caterpillar, but it has on its tail end what almost looks like tentacles, like little finger-like things here. And um, the weirdest thing about them is that they are uh, their skin is pretty much transparent. You can see their organs right through their skin. Uh, but they can be pretty big, too. They can go to be about four inches long. Um, what they use these tentacle things here for is to hold themselves up on the surface of the water, and they actually breathe through, uh, like a snorkel here in their butt. Another thing that kind of makes them weird. The crayfish, we're all familiar with that, looks like a small lobster. They are, ver they are related, but uh, Sometimes they're only a few inches long. Sometimes they can grow up to 6 to 10 inches long. That's the largest one I've ever found is about 10 inches long. 
So here's a crayfish. You can pick them up, but watch the claws, they can pinch you. The damselfly nymph looks a lot like, you guessed it, the mayfly nymph. They are larger though, but if you look at the tail, their tail, instead of being three skinny tails, these tails are very feathery. And uh, this picture was very well. Uh, there's one that's kind of a greenish color. You can kind of see the feathery shape here. Look at that. Brown, big, fat, wide, feathery tails, three of them. And they also have much longer legs and longer body than the mayfly nymph. I always think about a damsel in distress, and I think that's partly where it got its name from. The damsel might be putting feathers and jewelry in her hair, and that's what these kind of look like to me. The dragonfly larva, I'm sorry, dragonfly nymph, looks very different from its adult form, but they have a very wide oval shaped body, very jagged edges. To me it looks kind of like a leaf. They're here we go, pointy edges on the, on the abdomen. They have really big eyes. Um, they're just pretty easy to find or identify once you find them. And this is a scud, which is a freshwater shrimp. Um, they are much, much smaller than the shrimp we eat, though. This is only a quarter inch long. And um, they swim sideways. That makes them kind of look fun picture of one. You may not have ever known, but that's pretty much what a shrimp looks like, but we only eat this part on a real shrimp, edible shrimp. Uh, scud, it would take a lot of work to get anything edible out of them. Like I said, they're very small. Here's another scud picture. And the last group two organism, I've never actually found one of these, but it's called the water snipe fly larva, and um, they look a lot like a crane fly larva with just two two tail-like things in the end, instead of the multiple lobes, like the crane fly larva. So I'm going to stop here, because this is the end of group two, and I'm running out of time on my screencast. And part three will be all about group three organisms. Thank you.